Do you want to sit here? Samir? Yeah, that's good. And then Doug, if you want to... down this way just a little bit. Okay. We're happy to be back here at the Palm Steakhouse. Uh, as you see, uh, Fred Sternberg had all the uh, beef vada tested out there, so there will be no issues uh, for this uh, steak lunch at the Palm. Um, we're happy to be back here. Uh, this is actually a media lunch for Ring Magazine to recognize Triple G as their best pound-for-pound uh, -pound fighter in the world. Uh, Doug Fisher, the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, is here. He's going to make the official presentation of the belt. It's a very high honor. All the accomplishments that uh, Triple G has made in the ring, all the belts that he's accumulated, uh, this is a very high honor. Finally! <laughs> it's a very high honor. Uh, being recognized as the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport of boxing. So it just happened that uh, we also signed the deal last week with uh, Canelo Alvarez for the rematch, September 15th. Uh, it was so uh, new that we don't even have a backdrop. So we're, this is really uh, for the specific purpose of uh, the presentation of the Ring Magazine belt. Uh, and naturally then we'll take questions and talk about the biggest fight in boxing between Triple G and uh, Canelo Alvarez. So, um, Doug, if you want to uh, make the official presentation, we've been waiting a long time actually for that belt to come in, and I know Gennady is looking forward to adding that to his, uh, to his collection. It's an impressive uh, collection. Should I speak in one of the, uh, the microphones? Yeah, yeah. You, can. You, can, you can take the handheld. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, listen, I don't, I'm not going to take too much, too much time here. Um, I just want to give a little bit of history about the Ring Magazine's pound for pound belt. Um, we haven't had one, uh, we haven't awarded one in uh, several decades. Um, it was first awarded to Purnell Whitaker in 1993, ironically after Whitaker faced a Mexican star and the outcome of that bout was a very controversial draw. But the editors of Ring Magazine and most of the public knew who really won that fight. And uh, so the editors of the Ring Magazine decided to, um, A, just on, on, off the draw, elevate Pernell Whitaker, who was number two pound for pound at the time. The great Julio Cesar Chavez was number one pound for pound at the time. You were probably there. You were probably working some corners there, <laughs> Abel. Okay, yeah, but yeah, you were you were uh, you were part of the you know uh, you were training some of the top pound for pound rated fighters at the time. A lot of interest in that showdown, and going into the fight, people said this is going to prove who's pound for pound number one. Um, and despite the the controversial draw, most people thought that Whitaker won, and uh, so he was elevated to number one pound for pound and he was awarded the first Ring Magazine pound for pound championship belt. Uh, and he was even on the, the cover uh, showing off the belt. Um, so Gennady, your last fight was, a, was a, a draw, but most people know who won that fight. And even beyond weight classes, uh, because that was looked at, and I think it was called supremacy for middleweight supremacy. But I think beyond weight classes, you, Gennady, uh, are the epitome of a champion. You conduct yourself as a champion. You live the life of a champion. You train like a champion. You wanna fight the best and you wanna challenge yourself. And that's what real world champions do. So you have a very impressive title belt collection, but with or without the belts, the people recognize you as the best, as a champion. And that's really what pound for pound is. It's being the best regardless of weight class. But even when we talk about your weight class, 
you're doing some very special things. You're the longest reigning champion in boxing. Um, I think you're the closest thing to marvelous Marvin Hagler, um, where he just stuck his claim uh, to be the king of the middleweight division and took on all comers. Um, and even when he lost controversial, people still recognize Marvin Hagler as the champ, you know, even when he lost to my boyhood idol, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. But when I first met you, and I've written about this, uh, it was in the, I think, the spring or summer of 2011. Um, and at the time, you were the WBA's interim champion. Am I right about that? Yes. He was preparing, and you sparred with Canelo Alvarez, he was preparing uh, for a fight with Kasim Uma. Is that right? Yes. And that fight was the first time he was elevated from the interim champion to the WBA full status champion. And he hasn't lost since. And he's had a lot of fights. And he is approaching uh, the all-time middleweight division record held by Bernard Hopkins, who I, yeah. So, so now there's some people who dispute this, right? Because they say, well, he had the interim belt and then it was just the regular WBA belt. And well, the WBA didn't, recognized or didn't sanction the Cal Brook fight. And I say regardless, if you're getting close to the all-time record, if you're getting close, even close, to equaling a feat of an all-time great fighter, you're in greatness territory. So obviously, you're one of the best fighters today. And whether or not you agree if he has equaled Bernard Hopkins' divisional record, he surpassed Marvin Hagler's. Marvin Hagler defended the title 12 times. Uh, the great Carlos Monzon defended the title 14 times. So he's already surpassed those fighters. Last time I checked, they're enshrined in the International Boxing Hall of Fame, and they are considered all-time great middleweights. So this is the territory that Gennady Golovkin is now in. So it gives me great pleasure um, to shut up and uh, to award this belt to Gennady Golovkin. And maybe you can stand up and, and sport the hardware. He'll come around, Doug. Okay. Around, yeah. All right. And here on this left, this left plate here, it says pound for pound number one since September 2017. So we're going on one year. There you go. Uh, You're the man. Thank you so much. Dougie, Doug, get in here for ring. Oh. That's a hard-earned honor uh, to get the pound-for-pound pound, uh, recognition from, from Ring Magazine. We want to thank uh, Doug. We want to thank you for coming out and making the presentation, and uh, especially for the Ring Ratings uh, Committee for uh, uh, bestowing that honor upon, uh, upon Triple G. Um, with that, <clears throat> we can transition. I also want to recognize uh, Pepe Suleiman, who's here representing the WBC. Uh, who's, uh, you know, Gennady is a proud champion of the WBC, he's a proud champion of the WBA. Pepe, if you want to say a few words uh, on behalf of the, of the WBC, uh, we'd be happy to uh, put this uh, next fight against uh, Canelo Alvarez, the first rematch of Triple G's career, uh, into perspective. Thank you very much. I'm here on behalf of the World Boxing Council and the 166 affiliated countries to it, and Mauricio Sulaiman. We are very, very happy that this fight finally got, 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 got made, got, got signed for. 
Mauricio says, and I'm, I agree 100% with him, and with everything that Doug said about, about Gennady, he's a gentleman, he's a true champion. And for the WBC Gennady, he is the captain of the WBC champions. So he has a very, very special place uh, in, in, in the history of our, our organization, in the history of boxing especially. So we, from now comes, now he has to concentrate because the important part comes, getting ready for the fight and really giving everything and making us proud once again. That he has never stopped doing. So for the greatest champion, our full support, we are always, as my father used to say, and we keep saying this, we are always in your corner. So the very best of luck. Thank you very much. And um, you're going to win. You're our champion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tom. I'm, this is, it's amazing that, that they finally agreed on, 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 on making the fight and showing it on HBO. So this had to happen because this is the fight that everybody wants to see, that everybody needs, that boxing needs. So thank you very much on behalf of the WBC and Mauricio Sulaiman. Thank you. Thank you, Pepe. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Triple G and the entire team are very proud that he is a champion of the WBC. He is a champion of the WBA. I think uh, he's the best representative for the sport of boxing, the best ambassador that a sport of boxing can have, uh, bringing new fans in with every fight. Uh, Triple G embodies what the true meaning of sport is um, and representing uh, the biggest fight now in the sport of boxing. As uh, Pepe said, this is, uh, he's always wanted the biggest challenge for his career. Uh, this is considered the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. This is considered the two best middleweights fighting against each other. Uh, and it doesn't get any bigger than that. It'll be in uh, T-Mobile Arena at, uh, in Las Vegas. It'll be on HBO pay-per-view. Um, you know, Gennady, uh, he's a world ambassador, uh, really, for the sport. Uh, some of you might have known that he was invited by Hublot to be at the opening ceremonies in Moscow. He just uh, came back last uh, Saturday, uh, actually Friday night, but uh, I spoke to him on Saturday. Um, if you saw some, a video where uh, one of the uh, astronauts on the International Space Station had a Triple G flag with him. I mean, there's things with his career that uh, just doesn't happen to uh, a boxer or a champion. Uh, and this point, at this uh, stage, he's the best pound for pound champion. So we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, Takate is a big supporter of uh, Triple G, uh, Shivas, uh, Cublo, uh, who has uh, brought out the third edition of his uh, Triple G watch, which will be uh, available here shortly before the September fight, uh, Brand Jordan. He's a big supporter of uh, Triple G with their merchandise, uh, Bijan, here locally on uh, Rodeo Drive. So uh, he's got tremendous support from his sponsors. Um, you know, we're all looking forward uh, to this rematch uh, against Canelo Alvarez, uh, September 15th. And uh, I want to introduce a longtime television partner uh, who launched uh, Gennady's career over here in the United States. It was uh, with their platform that allowed Triple G to become uh, one of the biggest stars in the sport of boxing, to become involved in the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Tony Walker from HBO Pay-Per-View. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everybody, for coming today. You know, we're very appreciative of the fact that uh, Triple G has spent his entire boxing career in the U.S. on HBO. We've, for 45 years, we've prided ourselves on bringing the best fights, uh, the best events, the biggest events in boxing to, to HBO, which started out with the thrill in Manila, and now we get Canelo Triple G2. Um, Gennady has carved out a position um, in U.S. sports uh, with his charisma. It's very, very uh, seldom you see a foreign athlete carve out the position in America that he has as an individual, not even as on a team sport. So uh, for all of the fans who are not already 
uh, getting ready to uh, watch this show. We're going to produce a bunch of video pieces to uh, highlight the, uh, the run up to this fight and uh, show how, for when you guys cover it, you're going to be able to report something special to your customers. I gotta thank Tom and Eric and, and the fighters for putting this together because even when we wanna put, put the biggest events on in boxing, it doesn't always happen. So uh, kudos to those guys. It's going to be a great night, a very memorable night, and uh, we're very glad to uh, broadcast the show. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. We'll be announcing uh, details. Uh, this is all just very fresh. Um, as I said, we just uh, agreed on the fight last Wednesday. Uh, so when the tickets go on sale, the ticket uh, scaling, the uh, HBO information, the, the undercard fights, all those details uh, we'll be announcing here shortly. Uh, Triple G is going to be going up to a training camp uh, here in the next uh, couple weeks uh, with uh, Dr. Abel Sanchez. Um, the professor of pugilism. Um, whatever he uh, whatever he does up there in Big Bear with all of his champions, Murat Gassiev, uh, all the champions that he trains up there that uh, punch so hard, and uh, Triple G is really the leader of the camp uh, up there. Um, you know, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce uh, Abel Sanchez to say a few words based on uh, you know how he sees uh, the preparation for this next fight. And um, how he, uh, you know, sees the next fight uh, going on September 15th. First of all, Doug, thank you very much to you and to Ring Magazine for, for this honor. Uh, this honor is uh, 18 long years in, uh, not only in Kazakhstan but in Europe. Uh, eight years with me of hard, hard work trying to get to this point. It didn't happen overnight, but uh, uh, a very professional athlete, a guy that uh, gives you everything so that the, the fans want to continue to see him on TV. Uh, he's going to be going to camp probably in the next, uh, probably a little after uh, the beginning of the month. Uh, we're going to start uh, preparing as we did for the first one, the fight on May the 5th. Uh, this, uh, this will be a little more of a grudge thing, I believe, uh, uh, on our part because of, uh, it's like that bride that uh, got stood up at the altar. On May the 5th, was, we were looking forward to that and looking forward to destroying him and, and, and getting the next one if it was going to be a next one. But uh, uh, mark my words, he's going to be uh, uh, very dedicated like he always is, but I think that in my, on my end, I need to make sure that he understands all the, all the issues that have been put in front of him, not by his choice, but issues that have been put in front of him by Canelo, and, he's gonna, and Canelo's going to pay for this. Thank you. As uh, Abel alluded to, um, <clears throat> you know, I would say the gloves are off for this promotion here. Uh, there was a lot of respect between the two guys uh, in the first, the first fight. Very controversial decision. Uh, Gennady thought it was a disrespect to the sport of boxing. Uh, somebody that we all thought uh, won the fight uh, to come away with a controversial draw like that. Then with the rematch happening, uh, everyone knows the scenario there that uh, Canelo had such a positive. He got suspended. Um, the Cinco de Mayo match uh, in Las Vegas uh, was canceled uh, strictly because of the uh, suspension of Canelo Alvarez. We scrambled, um, we saved the date, Cinco de Mayo, um, against Vanas Marrosian at the StubHub Center. We broke the uh, ticket revenue record, record at the StubHub Center. We broke the merchandise record at the StubHub Center. We set the, the highest uh, ratings on any premium cable uh, show for the last two years. Uh, with Triple G's uh, last fight, and, uh, and that's why he took the position that he did uh, in the negotiations. He gave me a clear instructions as to what he would accept. He would have signed a, a long time ago. And then finally, when, we were, when he was satisfied with the deal, that's when we signed, uh, we agreed last, uh, last Wednesday. So um, with that, you know, we can open up uh, to some questions. Uh, this is a little bit of uh, uh, informal. Uh, media lunch. Um, Gennady, if you want to say a few words first before we take the, the questions. Uh, and then uh, just, to, you know, if you're looking forward uh, to this rematch and looking forward to, you know, the biggest uh, participating now in the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. You can use this one here. Yeah. Just first. Good afternoon, everybody. Just first of all, thanks, Doug, for your present. It's a beautiful present. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And of course, everybody, you know, just good to see you. Right now, just I feel 
my true life. I come back, you know, for real life, for real boxing life. Thank you. If you have questions, I'm ready. We can pass around. Uh, why don't we pass around one of these microphones? That way everyone can hear. Gennady, last time we saw you at the Palm was about three weeks before May 5th. How much happier are, are you today than you were when we saw you a couple months ago with everything going on and everything that has taken place? I don't know how many percent, just a lot. That was, uh, that was the media lunch that we had to announce. Uh, no nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing to announce. Tom, over here. Uh, what was the deal changer last week to make this fight happen? As it was off the, off the table at noon that there was the deadline. What changed? What basically changed, if you can uh, tell us? Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, uh, <clears throat> there wasn't much of a deal changer. It was uh, Gennady was very clear what he would be satisfied with. He, he had made the concession to come off of a 50-50 split, which he thought was fair. Actually, we all thought it was fair. He's the champion. He's the one that most people thought won the first fight. He's the one that didn't test positive. So he felt uh, it's even, 50-50 uh, split. Then he said, okay, for Canelo's ego and to, for negotiations, he would give him, uh, you know, the extra 5%. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, the deal was dead. We had a deal in place. I have to give Billy Joe Saunders and Frank Warren credit. <clears throat> they had agreed to terms. Uh, to fight August 25 over here in Los Angeles. Everything was set with the form, with uh, HBO, uh, with all the sanctioning bodies that uh, Triple G could have fought another undefeated champion, uh, added another title, uh, the, the one title that was eluding him for so long that we tried to make the fight uh, with. And, uh, you know, Eric said he was going to go in the direction because we couldn't come to the agreement. He they were going to go in the direction of Danny Jacobs. Uh, about an hour later, he called back, had one last proposal which satisfied what Gennady wanted, and that's why we're here. So, look, Canelo Alvarez is not going to lose money on this fight. This will probably be his biggest payday. So whoever, you know, whatever, uh, you know, conjectures there are with splits and things like that, Canelo will most likely make the biggest payday of his career. He did make it uh, uh, in the last fight against Triple G. So Triple G brings a lot of value uh, and the titles uh, with him uh, to this uh, to this boxing match. and. And, uh, you know, this is the fight that the fans have wanted to see, want to see, that the media wants to see. And, and internationally, this really uh, surpasses a championship boxing match. This becomes an international sporting event. It'll be shown in over 150 countries worldwide. And uh, we project it to do much higher numbers uh, than the first fight and, and, uh, and set the record for um, the biggest pay-per-view for this year. From what I understand, were they the ones who called you back? You didn't call them back? No, they were the ones that, uh, you know, they imposed this deadline, which, you know, I never am a believer of deadlines, and I'm not really a big believer in uh, negotiating in the, in the media. But, um, uh, you know, I was on the phone trying to come up with a solution with Eric uh, before their 12 o'clock deadline. We couldn't come up with a solution, and then that's when we said, okay, we'll just go different ways, and, you know, maybe in the future, maybe in the future that uh, that we can do this. And then... That's when I think they realized, look, they can't let this opportunity go by. You never know when you have a big fight like this. You never know if Canelo fights somebody else, if Triple G fights someone else. You never know if someone gets injured. You never know what happens and if, if a fight can be put back together sometime down the road. So uh, we're happy that uh, we were able to work out the deal with uh, Canelo and Golden Boy. And, um, and here we are. Lance, did you have a question? I, I got one. Oh, Robert. Uh, for Gennady, Gennady, based on everything that has happened since the first fight, how much respect have you lost for Canelo? I don't know how much. Just a lot. Like I see if he knows how much. I don't know, present. You know. I know him a long time ago. He's a different guy right now. He's a completely different guy, you know. He's not sportsman, you know. He Right now, it's a different situation, 100%.
Gennady, what was it like for you when Tom says, you know, this is what they want, this is their final offer, and at some point Tom said the, the deal was dead. Uh, how did you feel about sticking to your guns and, and getting the figure you wanted? What was that like hour like when you thought maybe the fight is dead, but I need, this, I need to get paid what I need to get paid here? It's going to be... My original demand was 50-50, uh, but then I agreed to do it 45 uh, because this is exactly how I thought how much they're worth, and they just confirmed that this is exactly how much they're worth, and therefore that's you know how we're moving along with that. And he, they knew that, and they have confirmed that that's exactly how much they're worth. <laughs> Understand that. Amongst the team, we had probably four or five meetings, and in every meeting, Gennady was adamant. Gennady, Gennady was in Russia. You know, do what happens, happens. This is what's going to be. If it's not, we have another fight. On, on, he, he wasn't, to, to answer your question, he wasn't concerned that last hour. It is what it is. We're going to go fight somebody else. Esta pregunta es, por favor, para Abel, y si puedes pasársela también para que nos respondan y, y hagan la traducción en español. Eh, eh, Finalmente ustedes fueron realmente herméticos, aguantaron y, y finalmente dan ustedes a conocer el valor que tiene Triple G. ¿Cómo fue que toman esa decisión? Porque me parece que fue la más difícil, el sentar, el dejar el, 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 bien sentado el valor que tiene Triple G hoy en el mercado. Es la pregunta para los dos, para Triple G para ti. ¿En inglés o en español? Eh, para ti en español y si me ayudas con Triple G. Ok. Uh, bueno, primero él, como, como dije hace ratito, él, uh, nosotros como equipo tuvimos como cinco juntas, y en las cinco juntas él nos dijo que lo que quería, él le dijo a Tom lo que quería y, y, y no cambió, ni, ni una de las veces cambió. Se fue a Rusia a hacer un, a, con la, a, en, la, en la copa y él estaba allá y, y lo que pasara, pasara, pero él dijo que quería esa, esa, cima, esa, esa uh, cifra. Si, si no era, íbamos a pelear contra, contra Saunders. No, no, había, no, había, no, había, no se iba a mover para ningún lado y él, él se iba a quedar ahí. ¿Por qué? Porque es hombre de carácter, hombre de dijo lo que quiere y es lo que va a hacer, si no, que se muevan ellos. Pero me, me queda claro que ustedes dejaron también claro el valor que tiene el peleador, el Triple G, o, es a lo que voy. Sí, exigiendo eh, eh, el porcentaje que exigió, quiere decir que es, él, él piensa que es lo que vale. Por favor, it, it is truly an excellent deal and there's a lot of money at stake. And we both understand that we are currently in a great position and we're not going to lose those positions. And they have understood me correctly that I'm not going to go down in this deal and they knew that they will have a good deal either way. And it only says that they understand their position <laughs> and this position is favorable, favorable to them as well. Thank you. Hi, Gennady. Um, you know, now after all that's gone through, like 12 rounds of Canelo and the, the positive drug test and everything, when you like see his face and hear his name, like, what, what are your thoughts about him as a person? I don't think anything about him as a human being. I'm, I'm not really concerned about him as a human being. I just hope that he will be there on September 15th to fight. 
But is, is there um, a greater sense from you to want to inflict some punishment on him after all he's put you through? I'm always motivated. I'm the champion. It is him who has to be motivated because he needs to uh, prove himself. Tom, uh, throughout your relationship that you've built with Golden Boy and the negotiation that you've had before, in your historical experience in dealing with them, at, at any point, did you have any doubt that this was going to be something that was going to happen? You know, Mohammed, I always thought <clears throat> the fight was going to happen. I thought it was too big uh, not to happen. Although when it came down to the last two days, um, like I said, Gennady, out of principle, uh, like he said, this is a big revenue fight for both fighters, but it's not about that. It's about proving who's the best in the sport of boxing. It just happens to also be the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. But this is out of respect that Gennady uh, demands as a champion, that he expects... Uh, we made a lot of concessions for the first fight. We made a lot of concessions for the rematch. When Canelo got suspended, he stood his ground out of principle. He said, either we'll go with this fight or we'll go um, the other direction with Saunders. And he had no problem. Uh, he thinks that uh, fighting another unde uh, undefeated champion uh, was on a sporting level just as high as uh, fighting Canelo Alvarez. It just wasn't the same profile. It wasn't the same revenue. But he wasn't focused on the revenue. It was all about the principle and about the respect for him as a champion. And, and he got the deal that he said from the beginning, and, and uh, here we are now, September 15th. Gennady, um, obviously when we went to go see you in Big Bear, uh, you know, you talked about the injection marks and stuff that you saw on Canelo's body. Uh, you know, today uh, you mentioned, you know, that he's, you don't think he's a sportsman. Uh, was there any reluctance on your part uh, to give somebody like that a chance to fight for the middleweight championship? First of all, everything I said, the commission has already proved that he failed the drug test. Therefore, if commission allows us to fight, I will fight. I don't really care uh, about anything. I just want to fight, and I will fight either way. Okay, and uh, just one more, just to, as a point of clarification. When you, you said initially, obviously, that you asked 50-50, so you said you kind of knew that it was going to come down a little bit from there, or was that a difficult process at all, kind of backing off the 50-50 thing? I didn't know anything. All I said is, all right, I'm going to agree to 45%, but this is going to be my last uh, percentage. I didn't think about this too much. First time I said 50-50, second time I thought, okay, 45-55, that's fine. It's going to be my last uh, statement. Thank you. Tom, this is for you, Gennady. Um, you were at Estadio Azteca in Mexico City, October, November, for the Patriots game. To, to hear thousands and thousands and thousands of fans cheering your name, you see Mexicans, Mexicans, Americans wearing Triple G shirts, Golovkin shirts, hats. Just what does that say to the fact that you've now crossed over into the fan base where um, Canelo is from in Mexico. You know, Francisco, this goes back to uh, him just being a great ambassador, a world ambassador for the sport of boxing, whether he's in the Azteca Stadium in Mexico City in front of uh, 80,000, 90,000 fans uh, chanting his name when he comes on as uh, one of the Mexican heroes on the middle uh, of the field uh, because of the donation he made for the earthquake relief fund with Carlos Slim. You know, it, um, whether he's in Mexico City, whether we went to the WBC convention in China, 
he was just at the World Cup in Moscow. Wherever he goes, when he, you know, he sold out the O2 Arena in 11 minutes uh, in London. Uh, he's a hero in Monaco. Um, you know, he fought there three times. Uh, wherever he goes internationally, uh, his brand is uh, is at the highest level and and growing. And uh, that's one thing I'll say that the fights with Canelo Alvarez has done, especially here in the U.S., has raised his profile. Um, I heard people, you know, whether it's at the gym or on the street, you know, just talking about Triple G Canelo, you know, and not knowing that I was associated with Triple G. And uh, this is the fight that this is one of those rare fights that crosses over, not just for the hardcore boxing fans or the casual boxing fans. This crosses over to fans who aren't e to people who aren't even a, a fan of the sport of boxing. You know, they'll come to watch the fight because their friends are watching the fight. This is this has that snowball effect that will. Uh, create more fans for the sport of boxing, and since the first fight with Canelo Alvarez, you know his his uh, brand is sky high, and uh, internationally he's one of the most recognized uh, sportsmen or athletes uh, anywhere, you know, from any sport. So um, that's what I would say uh, when you were asking about the question with uh, Azteca Stadium. He has a, a great support from the Mexican fan base. They appreciate his style. They respect his character and the fact that he respects the sport of boxing and respects his opponents, the way he treats his opponents, the way he, uh, his style in the ring to give them entertainment uh, when they come and buy a ticket or, or buy the fight on pay-per-view. But it's like that really uh, worldwide, um, you know, when it comes to uh, the respect that he commands from the fans. And then this question is for you, Gennady. Uh, with a roller coaster the last month, six weeks, did you deep down feel this fight's going to happen, will happen, if eventually, if not the way it did in September or for September? Yeah, I feel. I feel it's possible, this fight. You know, everybody very excited. You know, everybody wants this fight. Yeah, I believe. Gennady? When you countered with 45%, was there any doubt in your mind that they might not have taken the deal? And if they didn't take the deal, were you the one that wanted to fight Billy Joe Saunders? It wasn't about me being sure or not sure. It was just my last uh, proposition, and if it's just take it or leave it, and that's it. Be because I was, I was the guy who wanted this fight the most. But that's all. And if there wasn't any fight with uh, Canelo, of course we would fight Billy Joe Saunders. We would try to make a fight with Billy Joe Saunders. And real fast, when you heard Billy Joe Saunders, pulled the hamstring, possibly to fight your canal. What did you think? What were your thoughts on that? I didn't have any thoughts. I don't think about these guys. If, if Canelo fight wouldn't happen, we would try to fight uh, Billy Joe Sanders, and that's it. Gennady, moving ahead to the rematch, what changes in your view in the rematch than last September, tactically, in terms of the pure fight? Maybe a better question to Abel. I'm ready right now because I'm more excited. I'm really on this fight. I'm very hungry. And Abel, could you, I know it was only a two round fight, but I know Gennady and you were very adamant that you wanted to go through, you did not want the long layoff. What was the importance you thought of that fight with Mark Erosion? In terms of just keeping the rhythm and the sync. We had been in training camp for a while. Uh, you don't waste uh, five, six weeks of training camp uh, and wait another three months for another fight. Uh, I, I, needed him, I needed him to fight just to, first of all, take out some aggressions. Two, he wanted to fight for the fans. Really, the money was not the important thing. He wanted to put on a show for his fans. His fans were expecting a fight. He was very upset. First of all, he was very, very upset that it didn't happen in Vegas because there's a lot of people that bought tickets, not only from Kazakhstan, but all over the world. Bought tickets for flights, made reservations for hotels, made, bought tickets for the fight. So he wanted to make sure that he was out in front of his fans. Uh, he, 
as Tom just alluded to, the, all the records that he, that he said, fighting is somebody that nobody uh, wanted him to fight, uh, yet the people just want to see him fight, so that's what he wanted to give them. Gennady, I want to tip my hat to you and leave it off. Uh, congratulations on winning this uh, Ring Magazine pound per pound title. I spoke with you before about who was your idol. You mentioned Marvin Hagler. If he was in the room here today, what would you say to him? position like you with Shubara Leonard. Excuse me. And now как бы сказать, как знаешь, сейчас мы можем повторить ту же историю, как и вы. Yeah. We can repeat history like your fight with Leonard. You know, I'm very excited. This story seriously, this is step like a story for me, you know, maybe it's hundred percent for me and for my my kids, you know, because for my friends, for my fans, everybody called me, said, oh, gee, this is story. You know, it's history. Tom, I'm... <clears throat> Uh, Tom, you know, I, I don't know how much you're allowed to divulge, but if you could please, uh, as much as you're allowed, just explain this Hail Mary that got this deal done at the, I guess, past the 11th hour? It was past the 12th hour, Mike. Um, it really, literally, there, there was no positioning. There was no more poker playing. It was, it was dead. Uh, I thought when I hung up the phone with Eric that uh, they were going to go. You know, he said that they already had a deal done with Jacobs, which I come to find out afterwards it might not have been completely done. Uh, our deal with uh, Billy Joe Saunders and Frank Warren was definitely uh, had been agreed to. Um, but, uh, you know, our part of the agreement was we wouldn't go into the exact details uh, of what the final agreement was. But uh, you can, uh, you know, Gennady, if he wasn't, uh, if he didn't get what he wanted, he wouldn't have agreed to the deal. So whatever you want to uh, infer from that, that, uh, you know, we can leave it at that. But uh, he's happy. Uh, this will be a big promotion. It'll be uh, a great fight for both guys. Look, it gives Canelo Alvarez the opportunity to fight for his titles. If Canelo wins September 15th, then all of a sudden this title belt goes to him. Uh, Gennady's other title belts go to him. So, you know, Canelo still has a big career in front of him. It's just uh, Gennady stuck on, uh, stood on his principles. And uh, at the end of the day, he got, he got what he was looking for. And a question for Abel. Uh, what, what, do you, what are your thoughts about Canelo Alvarez after everything that's happened? He was in my training camp probably about six years ago. He spent uh, three different uh, three different training camps in my in my camp. And as Gennady was just saying, he was a different kind of person. He was a very humble, very uh, very nice kid. Uh, it seems that uh, today uh, uh, his riches have made him a different person. Uh, he's he's a very good fighter. He's an exceptional fighter. He's uh, he's doing a lot uh, for the boxing in Mexico, but um, as fast as he went up, they go back down, you know, and all the people that you stepped on on the way up, you're going to meet on the way down. So uh, I think that uh, his persona today, his diva-like sometimes, uh, his actions, uh, what he says and what he doesn't say and what he doesn't do uh, are hurting him. You know, I, I know, of course, you and Gennady are very professional, but we've had some, so many great rivalries over the years where there was genuine bad blood, like, you know, Barrera Morales comes to mind. Do you see this even approaching that, where these guys really hate each other? Or I, I don't think it's hate, but I don't think that it's out. Those rivalries were rivalries inside the ring, not outside the ring. So uh, what he's doing, what Canelo's doing outside is hurting Canelo, not hurting Golovkin. But if this ends up being the kind of fight that uh, we think it's going to be, then I think that that could be a rivalry for the third one and, and, and a fourth one. These two guys are not the kind of fighters like uh, Vasquez and Marquez where they beat each other up and they can't function the next fight. These two guys are, are, are exceptional boxers and, and good fighters, and uh, they're not gonna, it's not going to be that type of fight. So there will be a, a third and fourth, or there could be a third and fourth. But it's safe to say, as Tom was alluding to earlier, that there is genuine, genuine bad blood and distaste. Hate it. it's, uh, it's not hate. It's bad blood just because of what he's put us put us through. Uh, and yeah, there there is uh, some rights that need uh, some wrongs that need to be righted, and, and they will be on the fifteenth. Gennady, uh, one eighteen one ten became very famous on Twitter. Uh, Adelaide Bird took a lot of heat. 
do you think that you can get a fair shake in this? Do you feel like you have to go in there and knock him out? Same question also for Abel after. I don't even think about those things. I'm not pressured by any kind of factors. I'm absolutely, I don't really care about, you know, what judges decided to do. This is not concerning me at all. Truth is such a thing that where you can take the truth, you can actually live with it. But those who cannot accept the truth, you know, getting all anxious about it. And he's feeling himself very comfortable right now. You guys, uh, last fight, you know, was preceded three weeks before by Mayweather McGregor, and that probably hurt your pay-per-view, even though it was a, a, a very strong figure. This time, you know, there's a lot of bad blood at play, animosity running very deep. But Canelo has only been seen basically with his Golden Boy promoters around him talking about the, the clombuterol results. And we really have not had any kind of access to him since. How much are you guys concerned that he's not going to be a willing participant in promoting this fight, Gennady, like you do? You know, Lance, just like we can't control you know, what he's gonna, where he's gonna train or how he's gonna fight in the ring is, you know, however they promote the fight on their side is up to them. Uh, you see Gennady here sitting in front of everyone, very accessible to the media. I've talked to Abel already. We're gonna have, uh, uh, you know, the open days uh, in the training camp for the media. He's gonna come down here. He's gonna do other interviews, other appearances on television. So Gennady's gonna go through this promotion and this training camp just like it's another fight. Of course, it's a rematch with Canelo Alvarez, but he can't focus or we can't focus as a team. What's what's Canelo going to do? What Golden Boy is going to do? Um, we'll try to make the best out of the promotion that we can. Uh, Triple G is always, because he's the champion, he takes on the responsibility of taking the lead in the promotion, regardless of uh, how the promotional structure is. Uh, that's his responsibility as a champion, and frankly, that's one of the reasons why his star has risen so quickly from pretty much not being known here in America when he made his HBO in September 2012. Now it'll be exactly uh, six years from his HBO debut. It'll be September 15th, 2018. And uh, he is one of the biggest stars um, in the sport of boxing here, not only in the United States, but internationally. And that's the responsibility that he takes. And you know, we'll do our part. You know, if Canelo locks himself in the training camp and focuses on the fight, you know, that's up to him if he wants to do it that way. But uh, uh, you see, Gennady's not hiding from anyone. A lot of times he's out of the country, and that's why we <laughs> can't get access to him. But uh, now that he's uh, going to be here, uh, you know, training up in Big Bear, um, we're going to do our job to promote this fight. Gennady, what was your reaction when Canelo didn't want to face off with you this time around? Do you think it's going to hurt the promotion at all? Especially since the first presser, he did say that they didn't need trash talk to sell the fight, but now he doesn't even want to face off. What was your reaction? I think, I think he simply cannot look into my eyes. And that's, that's all. Because he knows that I, I am correct in everything. We're going to wrap it up here. Uh, if there's maybe one or two last questions, and then we're going to. Hi, Tom. Moving forward now, a similar type of question as you go about to promote this fight and do all the things on your end that you need to do, does it give you any sense of dread for the things you have to come together with them to promote the fight that'll be challenging or difficult in from now to the finish line? I think it's going to be uh, very straightforward, uh, just on a much bigger scale. You know, we've done co-promotions with Golden Boy before. We had a very successful promotion uh, when they had the champion, David Lemieux, uh, when uh, Gennady had his first unification bout. We sold out Madison Square Garden uh, on HBO pay-per-view, and, and uh, the promotion for the first fight last year uh, was very successful. So. 
Uh, we don't anticipate uh, really anything different uh, this time around, except for it's on a much larger scale. You see all the TV cameras here. We're really uh, uh, here for the Ring Magazine uh, presentation of the pound for pound belt, and you have all these, uh, all the cameras, all the media here to see uh, Triple G, whether it's Canelo, whether Canelo is sitting next to him or not. Uh, the interest of this fight seems uh, just on a uh, much higher scale, multiples uh, than the first fight. And uh, I think you'll see uh, the reaction from the fans. And everyone's asking me, when can they buy tickets? When can they, you know, should they buy their flights and hotel rooms? And uh, the media requests already are, are going through the roof. So, um, and I think uh, this time around, look, uh, Triple G doesn't want to leave his fate in the hands of three individuals. It's what happened last time. We saw the result. Um, the officials are going to be under a microscope this time. Uh, I think from both sides, but especially from the Triple G side, given some of the irregularities of the scoring for the first fight. And, um, you know, we'll uh, hopefully, uh, it won't go into the judges' hands. Uh, Triple G has had a knockout streak of uh, 23 in a row recently, and uh, he just started uh, his uh, second knockout streak, right, Abel? For, uh, he has one knockout, and... Uh, Looks forward to uh, this being a second knockout for the next uh, the next streak, and then uh, breaking the record at the same time for uh, what the great Bernard Hopkins had achieved. Hard Sam. I'm very happy. Hard <laughs> Sam. Not only me, everybody. go. So we'll, we'll wrap it up now. Uh, Abel and I will stay after, do some uh, interviews. Uh, Gennady's got to get back. Uh, oh my God. Uh, get back to Santa Monica. And, uh, we appreciate everyone coming out.